Thank you, Susan, for that introduction, and uh, thank all of you for being here this morning. It is truly a pleasure for me to be here with you. Uh, when uh, Lee and Billy reached out to me and asked me to come speak, uh, it was quite an interesting sort of blast from the past. And, and uh, in fact, he sent me the, the bio that I guess he used or someone used a decade ago when I was here last. Uh, when my daughter was 12 years old and that bio was really a, kind of a reminder of how much I've aged and how little hair I've got left in years. But what's really encouraging is that uh, all of you have aged 10 years as well. Uh, so I don't feel quite as bad being up here. Uh, also made me realize how fortunate I, I have been to have spent 30 years in the outdoor industry, uh, making a career of something that I grew up as a, as a young child reading about. You know, I decided at the ripe old age of 12, literally, that I would be a wildlife biologist and study white-tailed deer for a living and make a living at it. And I even convened a meeting with my parents at the time and, and I claimed proudly that that's what I was going to do. And they looked at me with this very inquisitive, puzzled look and asked me if that was a real job and that fact they paid money. Uh, and I spent the next 30 years trying to answer those questions. And uh, it's been, been great. And uh, one of the reasons I've been able to enjoy this passion 30 years since I've been married to a saint for 31 years. And uh, that's my wife of uh, 31 years hiding. And uh, and I promised her, and, well, one thing I learned in 31 years of marriage is you don't break any promises to your wife. That's one, that's one line you don't cross. I'm going to do that here this morning uh, very briefly at the risk of great peril. And I did not bring a security detail, but if you did hear uh, where my alma mater arises from, uh, you'll know that there's one thing that rivals the sanctity of marriage in the southeast. And so I have to take one moment here to uh, just plug just a minute. Um, uh, it, 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 it actually is 41 years in the making, so that outdates my marriage by a decade. So it may not happen again in my lifetime, so I'll have to just take this opportunity to, uh, to blow. Uh, with that, I'll get into the program. I don't have enough time here this morning to go through the depth of, of the Hunt Stand app. Uh, quick show of hands, how many of you have seen it, used it? Just a quick show of hands, so you know, maybe 20% maybe of the crowd. I'm not here as a big sales pitch this morning. Uh, I am blessed to work for Hunt Stand. I'll show you why in a minute because it, it really affords me the, the opportunity as a hunter and a biologist to do things that I never thought possible with technology, to do a lot more efficiently. Real quick history of the company. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of details, but it's always important, I think, to kind of tell where a company comes from and, and kind of who's behind it. Our company was founded a decade ago by Lanford Holloway. Lanford is a hunter from South Carolina, was in an MBA class and was challenged with the project. And uh, he you know, had gone away uh, uh, from school for a couple of years, come back for his, for his MBA. And uh, his hunting club had changed. They cut it. They cut the timber on it, quite a bit of it. And he didn't know his way around anymore. It changed the landscape so much with a big place outside of Columbia. And so he decided to use technology as a product, went over to the uh, computer sciences uh, department at the uh, University of South Carolina. We got a couple of Indian American computer science guys to help him create a minimum viable product and the rest is history, as they say. Uh, the original company is called TerraStride. Some of you may be familiar with that product as well. We have two products, TerraStride and HuntStand. TerraStride is a land brokerage platform that allows sort of virtual tools of high value property. Uh, we won't talk anything about TerraStride today, but that is another piece of the company. Uh, the product went live in 2013. Uh, Terrastride, the following years, so those two products uh, very quickly gained a lot of traction. I won't go through a lot of detail here. We hit 1 million downloads by 2017, started getting some great recognition by 2020. Uh, and for the last two consecutive years, made the Inc. 5000 fastest growing companies in America list. So I can just say that it's been on quite a trajectory. Uh, I'm now in my second year with the company. A little quick background here, we've had over 6 million downloads of the product on a rolling 12-month basis. We expect to crack 2 million users on a rolling 12-month basis this year. We're at 1.89 right now, a million users on, on the past 12-month period. So obviously a lot of people have this in their hands on their phones. Uh, we've got literally 190 million acres mapped. We can tell you about property that you can't imagine. You know, we've got data on 190 million acres. We've got data on hunters, how often they recreate, what properties they use, how often they use them, how many tree stands they put up. And just an incredible amount of data, tens and tens of millions of data points. It's really cool from a biologist's perspective to kind of delve in and see behind the scenes of how hunters and landowners 
use the land. I won't go into all the details here today because I can't. Literally, the app is so robust and has so many features that you know, we could spend hours going through it. I'm not going to bore you with that, but I want to give you kind of a snapshot of some of the things it can do and how easy it can be to increase your efficiency as far as landowners. It's really a, a seamless integrated product. It's not just an app that shows you private property boundaries or marks with your deer stands or your timber stands. It's kind of an integrated social networking platform as well. It allows you to share maps virtually with other people on your property, different levels of, of security access, allows you to exchange information kind of in a social networking almost Facebook type format. We have a, a very robust media team as well as part of our company that puts out uh, an incredible amount of content, uh, video content, print content, peer reviews. Uh, I do a series called Murphy's Law and Whitetails. It's on YouTube. It's a weekly whitetail series, three or four minutes with a cup of coffee on a whitetail topic type stuff. We push all that through our app as well. So it's a way to convey information and keep this audience of people connected in a very interesting and I think unique way. Uh, it really is the next generation of tools. Uh, you know, technology has obviously come a long way. The, the thought of, of this 10 years ago when I stood before you was just not even a concept. I mean, this was, this was just an idea a decade ago, and now it's here. It's in our hands. And what we can do with, with our smartphones or tablet or desktop, particularly in our hands, you know, really does replace all these tools that I've got across a lot of them. I can double or triple that list pretty quickly. I mean, it's your own satellite. I mean, you've got three different satellite layers. I'll talk a little bit about those in a minute. A number of other tree cover, soil layers, and a number of other types of type layers you can look at on a given piece of property. It's an incredibly sophisticated weather data system. Uh, it's like having a mainframe computer and a bunch of technicians back there working for you. It's a GPS, it's a measuring wheel, it's a range finder, it's a compass, and so much more. I mean, literally, you can almost do anything you can imagine on the landscape with this product. And I grew up in Hillbilly, I mean, literally, in Hillbilly, northeast Oklahoma, trapping and hunting and running up the hills of the Ozark Mountains. You know, I can find my way around the woods. You know, when, when this technology came out, I kind of stopped at who needs that kind of stuff. I can find my way back to my truck after a deer hunt or whatever. Now I wouldn't think about not having it. I mean, it just makes life so much more efficient. A um, little bit more about the company, and I won't blame you there, but I will say that it does start at the top. Our, our CEO, 30, just turned 39 years old in the American dream to have built a company you know, uh, out of college and, and something that he's passionate about. He is a deer hunter. And as you can see there, that, that picture was not taken in the Midwest. That was outside of Columbia, South Carolina. If you want to go back to South Carolina, that is a very, very nice deer. It's 150 inch deer from South Carolina. It's one of the top of the county. So he's a serious hunter. Uh, I fit in kind of on the left here. This is me on the second left. I'm VP of strategy for the company. Basically what I do is, is look at potential partnerships for the company that makes sense for us. And I typically partner with groups that have 5,000 or more hunters, landowners, that type of thing, that size audience and larger, try to create strategic alliances with them to get our product in their hands. Pretty straightforward. What's really cool about this company and, and, and our CEO is that he asked me a year ago to take our company through a conservation visioning process. This is a for-profit action, right? This is a technology company. A lot of technology companies want conservation pillars because he genuinely believes in the future of our industry. When I say our industry, I'm talking about hunting, forestry, all the things that we enjoy. He's also a forest landowner. Uh, he and his father are fourth generation forest landowners. They own uh, 600 acres near Lake Greenwood, <coughs> if you know where that is. Uh, I actually got to go walk to work with he and his father a couple of weekends ago and set up a management plan. And, and, and they learned a great and hard lesson. Uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, they had clear cut a stand of, of timber, of pine timber, and chose not to replant it, but let nature do its thing. And I can assure you that that uh, 100 acres is in great need of some TLC right now. It's pretty much worthless. Uh, but anyway, we went through this conservation visioning process, which was, I think, really, really cool. It came up with four pillars of the company. And, and those are providing great tools and information land access, one thing about our app is it gives you every single property in, in America. Your house, every piece of public land, every piece of private land, I can look up your name, your address, the number of acres you own, I can back, back search your address, you own other, other lands in other states, I can find them, I can do things that I could have never thought possible. It allows access to hunters, particularly on a lot of the landlocked public lands that we have. Partnerships, I'm here to do that. 
uh, but also our future. So we invest also in the R3 space, which is kind of retention, recruitment, reactivation. So I thought that was very, uh, I think, very forward thinking for a for profit company to be investing in conservation. These are the partners I work with. This is my portfolio currently. I've been there about a year and a half. You see kind of four different main categories that I work with. Conservation groups, pretty straightforward. National Wild Turkey Federation, Delta Waterfowl, Archery Trade, Sportsman's Alliance, you can see the names, Public Young, and so on. Of course, uh, products industry are like slash the leasing sector. Uh, obviously, West Grove Company, I'm so they're going to be here. A couple of other for profit leasing groups. We've got some pending relationships with warehousing, potlatch, uh, Milton Forestry. Uh, we've got one also with the Georgia Forestry Association. So, kind of that, that forestry sweet spot for us is also one of my areas of operation. State agencies, you think, well, why would state agencies be interested? Alabama DNR, we're in, their, we're in our third year of partnership with Alabama. And uh, they, all their field biologists, particularly their law enforcement staff use hunt stand because that technology is better than anything they have in their department. Uh, so their field, field operatives, if you will, use our technology because they're, you know, if someone, if a hunter says, hey, I found a you know, pile of bait in the wrong area or someone poaching this, that, and the other, instead of saying, well, where is it? Well, you go in a front gate, go down by Johnny stand by the big sycamore, if you hang a right, go down there, down there. You, you remember old Jim Bob's place that he had down at the bottom? It's kind of down in there. Uh, they don't have to do that anymore. Literally, they can drop a pin on a map, hit, hit share with that, that wildlife officer, and seconds later, that wildlife officer has a, a map of their property with a pin drop that says the date is right here, or whatever the situation is. Timber companies often use it to increase their efficiency because somebody can talk about a gate being out, or if we're doing, if we start some pretty cool technology, we're doing push notifications for leaseholders on forest, uh, forest lands where they come in for a thinning or a cut or a burn or something near deer season. That causes great angst among deer hunters not to know about these things. We can actually relay in real time and even show where on the map that activity is going to take place. And within this 100 acres, November 15th, right in the middle of the rut, or whatever. So a lot of ways just to improve efficiency. We've got some other players out there. This is just a group I work with. We actually have close to 75 additional partners in the TV, print, podcast, sort of that media space that I don't deal with. So we've got a large group of partners, suffice to say. Uh, we do operate on what's called a freemium model. So the base app itself is completely free. No strings attached. You can download it for free right now in seconds. Uh, and get about two thirds of the functionality of the app. Now we do show advertisements to that free tier base, that's how we monetize it. So big companies, Springfield Armory, Bass Pro Shops, Cabin Sports, Yamaha, all partners of ours, they'll be buying ads from us to show you in that free tier. If you upgrade to the pro tier, it's 30 whopping dollars a year. That's it, 30 bucks, the most you can spend with us. That unlocks all the tools that we have. Uh, and that also prevents you from getting more part with advertisements. That's kind of the whole play. Uh, some of the things we offer, uh, I don't get into great detail here. Uh, every inch of hunting land in America, public hunting, private hunting lands, it gives you property boundaries. Uh, it's good as are recorded in the local county governments, at least. Uh, generally, within, you know, we, we uh, generally have a three meter accuracy uh, on everything that, that we have from satellite imagery. Uh, we've got full offline capabilities, so if you're in a remote area, you simply save the map that you're interested in in an offline folder and it'll work perfectly fine in complete absence of having any cell coverage. You don't have to have cell coverage. Uh, we've got a, an innovative stand reservation system as well, so hunters can check in and check out of their hunting stands virtually, and an admin person, say a landowner, can have access to that and see that for those who still on the landscape as long as they're, they're, they're using the app. We've got a very sophisticated trail management uh, software platform. Those hunters who are running trail cameras, we use uh, species AI recognition to sort the photos. We can actually sort your turkey hog photos uh, electronically using AI technology. You can also mark the particular deer you're after, the tag on that deer at six different camera locations, and all the metadata, all the background information on those pictures, the time, the date, everything that that, that that picture tells us about that animal goes into an algorithm that predicts where that deer is most likely to show up uh, in the next three days based on all of the, the data that it's collected based on those photographs. We've got a feature called Real 3D, which allows you literally to take a 3D virtual fly through any property in the world, actually, certainly in America, where you can actually picture yourself flying a drone through your property, looking at all the valleys and topography, and all that uh, through our app as well. So a lot of cool stuff. 
Uh, we've got a lot of layers. And the layers are just simply ways to look at a piece of land. So we've got one called the, the Terra Plus tree, uh, tree cover layer, which shows tree cover. Uh, we've got one called an Afro Atlas. We've got monthly satellite updates with the only app in the world that, uh, that a non three letter agency doesn't use. Uh, most of the apps, and I didn't know this before I joined HuntStand, if you look at Google Earth or another provider called Mapbox, if you look at one of their satellite images of your property online, those can be anywhere from a few months to up to three years old. People don't realize that. I didn't. I figured they're finding stuff all the time. No, these are going to be very old in many cases. We're the only app in the world, literally, that we have monthly satellite updates. We can see what's happening on your property within a month. Uh, that's pretty cool. We're paying a pretty high fee. There's pretty cool technology. If you picture satellites the size of a microwave oven flying the Earth, there's 30 of them up there that we're, we're renting the service from. We're taking pictures of our, our planet every day, and we use an algorithm to smooth that 30-day picture into one. Because some days it's cloudy, or it's not always a good day to take a picture of your property. So just some of the other things, weather, solar, uh, solar information, and so on. When, when our CEO got into this business, he thought to take himself out of the printed map world. It actually hasn't done that. It's actually increased demand for printed maps. But the printed maps are augmented with all the data and stuff that landowners want on them. So we also are the largest provider of printed property maps in the country. So hunters can go in, landowners can go in, put all the markers in the world they want on their property, doll it up however they want, push go, and they can get a printed map to live their doorstep with all of that augmentation on it as well. So a lot of opportunities. A lot of fabric types and sizes that literally go from a little crushed up version that you can put in a pack that won't have any creases on canvas. You can wad it up as tight as you want the balls to your pack, pull it out perfectly fine again, or four by four wall mat. So a lot of different options for fabric types and so on. <clears throat> All right, little quick navigation. Just kind of give you a very quick tutorial of how the, the app works. Uh, so it starts with a hunt area. A hunt area is just a name for a piece of land that you want to capture for whatever reason. It could be your home site, it could be your, your commercial property, it could be a piece of public land, it could be a piece of land. You can give it a name, my hunt farm, whatever. You can have as many of them as you want. You have hundreds of them in your, in your folder. So you pick a hunt area, you save it, that's my hunt area, my farm. Then you start picking tools. I don't want to add things to it. I want to drop a deer stand on it or mark a piece of timber, whatever. So then you pick the tools to augment that map. Look at it a lot of different ways. You can then look at the, the property under all these different layers. There's about 20 layers. There's different satellite looks, tree layers, topo layers, soil layers, and you can look at your property in a lot of different ways, and you can share that. Uh, we have a, a network sharing function. So if if uh, if Johnny here uh, wanted uh, you know a few on my property and I wanted to share my map with him, I can easily do that by sending him an email invite and it's accepted and immediately downloads into his hunt areas. So it's now on my hunt area. I can give you full permission to change things. I can give you limited access. I can, I can determine how much I want him to change things or not. All right, so you pick a location. You can pick, you just hit where I am now. And it'll zoom in where you are now. You can search by property boundaries, property ownership. So there's a lot of ways you can kind of figure out how to set up a hunt area. You can look at public lands, hunting lands near me, public lands. You know, all kinds of different things. So you pick your, your hunt area based on what you want. You can, we, we've added, really enhanced our, our landowner search feature functions this past year. This is just how you can search for landowners. So if you want to know who owns the land next to you or down the road or in the next county, you can do a lot of different things. You can search by address, by the name, by actual coordinates you have. You can look under company or an individual name. Search just by county, and minimum and maximum. So I can say I want to know every landowner with 50 more acres in fill in the, the blank county. And it'll, it'll pull up every landowner that owns 50 more acres in that county. And if you find one, say, Oh, I didn't know John A. Smith owned that property. I can do a reverse search on him by name or by his address and find every property he owns anywhere in America. All right, so I can I can kind of reverse engineer my search in a lot of different ways and pretty much find anything I want. Uh, this we just used this as this is the United States of America near our, our, uh, somewhere in South, in South Carolina. But uh, you know, pulled up every property owned by the U.S. government around our headquarters, number of acres, 
would give an address here if they had one in Washington, D.C. for the government, but if they had a physical address, it would to tell you what the address is. So all of this can be done very, very easily. You can find just about anything you want in, in, in the United States. So we're soon to add Canada. We'll be the first one to add Canada as well. A little harder to get data from the socialist country or north. Um, map editor, so once you once you got a map, a piece of property, whatever you want to call it, then you start adding stuff to it. It's infinite. So we've got markers coming out our backside. Literally you can just put the mark anything you want. So you can mark deer stands, and it's got about eight different types of deer stands, the box stands, the ladder stands, you can mark roads, trails, structures, hazards, just anything. You can change the color on it. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can just add all the stuff you can make look like a Christmas tree if you want to. Uh, based on your own goals. Then you can also start putting shapes on there. So if you want to outline food plots or proposed thin thins or burned areas, you can start then putting you know different types of shapes on there. Uh, very easy to do. You can color code them. You want your food plots to be green. You can fill them in green. You know, again, you can do all these things you want to do however you want to do it. You can also then measure area. So if you want to know the exact acreage of a proposed activity, in this case a food plot, you don't have to do this anymore. Literally just drop pins on the map and it tells you that 3.91 acres. Easy when it comes to measuring seed, line, fertilizer rates, herbicide rates, all that can be done very, very easily because you know the exact acreage. You don't have to sit out there and walk this thing or shoot, shoot azimuths or anything like that. Same with range or distance, uh, we've got that function here. You don't even need a range finder. If you know where you are on the property and you can see the end of that power line that you want to shoot a deer at and you drop it in, it tells you the exact distance to that object. You don't need a range finder anymore either. You can just use your app. Uh, trace path function. This is one of my favorites. Very easy, simple, simple technology. A lot of apps actually have this. Basically, you just push go when you start walking or driving or riding your UTV. It puts a little dot on the ground where you are. You can save that. And, and I use it a number of ways. But one is, is to find wounded deer. Uh, good example, my daughter, great hunter, shot three does a uh, year before last in the evening. She hadn't missed a deer in a long time, so I knew she'd make good shots. They ran into a three or four year old cutover, full briars. And we searched without an app or anything after dark in the evening, found one of those after an hour, and she had to go home. And I was like, I don't know about the next one, I'm gonna find these deer, I know they're here. So now the next morning, it's from my trace path function, literally again marks a little dotted crumb trail on the, on the landscape. Went into that cut over, walked about six or seven yards in, walked the transect, walked to make sure I stayed straight because I was in briars. Stayed straight as I could, walked the transect parallel to that food plot, didn't find it on the first path, turned around, came back, boom, found it, found the first one, dropped the pin, kept walking, staying on the line, you know, can't see very far. Then on that line, I was watching, boom, came around the corner, found a second one, 17 minutes later, <coughs> both does found, didn't drop, go back to the truck, got them out. Piece of cake. You used to find shed antlers all the time because you think you can walk straight lines and cover a piece of property well. I promise you, I've yet to find a human that can walk straight lines in the woods very long. Uh, you think you can, but the slope of the land and various things happen, if you miss areas. And so if you want to be systematic and searching an area for something, this is a great, a great way to do it. Map sharing, I mentioned, very easy. So once you've got a hunt area, literally it's a push of one button. I want to share this, pick who you want to share it with, boom, sends an email, they hit accept, it's done. So you can share the map with different levels of access as well. So that again, if you want full access, some you trust, move your objects off or delete them, that's fine. You say, no, I don't trust them, I just want to look at it uh, and use it as I'm given. You can protect that and you can give them kind of a hybrid set of rights. So a lot, of, a lot of ways to do that, very easy to do. Stand reservations, as I mentioned, this is a kind of a, a virtual check-in, check-out system. So once the stands are, are put in on, on a property, and you added that to your hunt area, literally somebody can check in and check out, as you can see on the, on the, uh, the right here. You check in for specific times and dates so that if no one else can double to, you know, check in to your location and you check out and notify you that that, that stand is vacated. Friend finder, this is a great safety feature. So check-in, check-out system is great for safety because if people use it, then you know if they've left that stand or, or not. But let's say that, you know, Billy checked into a stand, but didn't check out, and didn't come back, it's noon, and Billy's got a heart problem. Uh, a little worried about it, Billy. 
Well, if he shared the, the print finder function on the phone, it would actually track his phone to his exact location, seeing in real time on the landscape. So you can actually see people exactly where they are on the landscape using that function. It's just simply an opt-in or opt-out function of the app. So if you want to use it, you can if there's no requirements. So the brother's not watching you unless you allow them. It only allows people on that property to see each other, but it allows them to do it in real time. Real 3D, I mentioned, that's the function that allows you to kind of a virtual drone view of the property. That doesn't help us a lot here in Alabama, where it's pretty flat. You got out west, I promise you, it is a neat feature. And one thing about um, our 3D technology, which is unlike some of our competitors, is the an any annotation you put on your map stays juxtaposed perfectly in that 3D view. Uh, others, you don't see any of your marks. So if you've got an elk camp on the side of a mountain, you don't even see that in the other apps. Ours, it shows you exactly where it is, you know, in, in, uh, in, in the proper, proper position on your landscape. Monthly satellite views are mentioned, the only app in the country that has this. It is a true satellite view, so it's not going to be crystal clear. A lot of hunters don't realize that, that the Google Maps and Mapbox actually augment their, their, their satellite imagery with aerial imagery. So one way you can see your truck parked in a parking lot is not coming from satellite, I promise you, that's coming from aircraft. So ours are not as sharp on the monthly view. We, have, we offer all the other views fine. We can still get Google Maps on ours and, and Mapbox. So the monthly satellite view is not going to be as crystal clear from a management perspective. If you want to see what that clear cut looks like or how much the property burned in a, in a burn or flow in or something like that, you can see it's that level of measurement is fine. And you can go back four years in our app, which is pretty cool too. You can go back month by month, four years in, in the past, and look at the property every month for four years in arrears so you can see change over time, uh, which is also a very, very cool feature. Uh, we've got a lot of weather and, and, and hunter-friendly technology, what's called the Hunt Zones Pac-Man thing, which basically puts a, a, a 360 degree ring on any spot you, you choose to look at, a deer stand, you want to see if, what that deer stand looks like today or tomorrow, put that on there and it shows you that red zone is the detection zone of the deer or the game, where your scent's going to go, in other words, so you can actually see in real time where that wind is, and you can actually look up to 72 hours in advance, so you can look days ahead, so I'm thinking about hunting this stand two days from now, you can see what the wind is doing two days from now on your stand location. Got one called the land zone, which is a duck hunter friendly one. It shows you how to put your duck decoys out where the, the ducks are likely to land into the wind. Uh, so it gives you a, a real great opportunity there for duck hunting. Got a lot of advanced weather functionality. Uh, everything you can imagine. Detailed weather forecasts, parametric pressure, wind speed, just all the stuff you can imagine. We've got full cylinder information, sunrise, sunset times if you're trying to be legal. Well, sunrise, sunset, my state, my honey purpose has got all that in there. Moon phase, just on and on and on. And it does it days ahead, you know, you can get up to a 14 day advance weather forecast, detailed by the hour. You look at this so many different ways. But just suffice to say, all the weather information you can want uh, from the best sources. Uh, you also can track your, your game harvest and observation data. So if your hunters are collecting harvest data or observation data, you can do that right in the app. Uh, pretty easy to do. It gives you nice reporting functionality out the backside if you want to use that. Advanced trail camera management software, again I mentioned, you can uh, use this to sort and, and manage game, game uh, camera photos at infinite item. Uh, and again, even down to predicting when a buck a choice or a deer or a hog which was the randomly you select if you want. Uh, the best prescription on when to hunt that animal where it will tell you that based on all the data, the metadata behind the photographs of that animal that you, you previously taken. Uh, and I can say as a hunter uh, that this is just in the last year and a half since I joined Hunt Stand, but every one of these, these successful hunts have had Hunt Stand as a core part of them. I can say it with absolute honesty, some of these animals I would not have taken if I had not used Hunt Stand. It's given me insights on the land that even as a very experienced, long-time hunter that I didn't have. Uh, and I say that with absolute uh, sincerity. So with that, uh, I'll, 